The SMSL DL100 is a game changer in the budget DAC market. It costs $190. That's not a high price for a device that can be a perfect starting point for a beginner audiophile with little money to spend. It also comes with a secret that's going to leave you wondering how they did that. It's just another black box. They can get boring, especially when a company like SMSL offers dozens of similar products. The chassis is fully metal, made out of bent aluminum sheet. It's not super thick, but it is also not as thin as on the DO100 Pro, one of their products I recently had a chance to review. The sides are angled a little, that's a purely aesthetical move, to differentiate this model from other similar ones they offer. On the bottom, it has four rubber feet. They do a good enough job of preventing unwanted movement on the desk. But this device is not heavy enough to allow you to plug in cables without holding the device itself. Realistically though, how often do you plug and unplug devices from a DAC? Feel free to let me know in the comments. The front of this unit greets us with a small, tactile volume knob. Next to it is a very bright screen, used to display volume, sampling rate and current settings. It's a clear improvement over older SMSL products, as it's not only brighter, but also more functional and refined. It's also a step up in the way it feels. I wouldn't call this device premium, but the case feels much more sturdy. The tolerances are tighter, which decreases wobble in the connectors or even the potentiometer. The finish itself seems thicker, thus much harder to scratch off. All that gives me confidence that this unit is not going to fail or break out of nowhere. If you're enjoying this video, please leave a like. Thanks. Most of the I.O. is on the back. We can find a standard power connector here, used for supplying AC power to the internal low noise switch mode power supply. Next are digital inputs in the form of USB Type-C, which has two modes to choose from, USB 1.1 for older devices and USB 2.0 for newer devices. They all go through the brand new 3rd generation XMOS chip. DL100 can take wireless audio with the use of Bluetooth input. For TV users, HDMI ARC is going to come in handy. Then there is an optical toslink connection as well as a standard coax. Since it's a DAC, it outputs analog signals and because it's a balanced DAC, which is crazy at this price, it has balanced XLR analog outputs, plus a pair of single-ended RCAs for compatibility. I'm considering the RCAs to be a compatibility-only thing, because the balanced outputs sound noticeably better. They are cleaner, more detailed and more dynamic. That's how I used it during the evaluation. On the front we have some more analog outputs, namely headphone outs, as this unit is also a headphone amp. It's mind-blowing how many things SMSL managed to fit in such a small box and tight budget. They come in two different flavors, a quarter-inch single-ended jack and a 4.4mm balanced connection. It's a fairly feature-packed unit. It supports MQA decoding and MQA CD for those Tidal users. I'm not using it personally, as I prefer regular PCM files. It can decode DSD-256, with the addition of DSD over PCM. If you're still watching, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Their proprietary audio clock processing circuit was implemented to help greatly reduce clock jitter. It uses numerous audio-specific audiophile-grade capacitors and resistors, instead of regular cheap Chinese parts. It is equipped with a fully featured remote and it can work as a digital preamp. SMSL even put some more effort into getting a higher certification thus a sticker confirming that. And finally, we can pick from five different types of filters. The differences between all filters can be subtle, but I can hear them. By far, the most interesting one is the non-oversampling filter. It's not running your DAC in a real NOS mode, as it's not an R2R DAC. However, what it does is quite simple. It purposefully doesn't cut down any top-end frequencies, which is perfect for the signal phase. This filter is perfect for extremely well-recorded music and well-done recordings. For everything else, it's probably the worst. It unmasks unpleasant issues in a very obvious way. My recommendation would be to use a slow and phase-compensated filter. That's the next best thing that doesn't mess up the songs as much in cases where they aren't perfect. And trust me, 
most songs are not perfect. It can take up to 32-bit, 768 kHz PCM signals. For this digital to analog conversion, it uses four pieces of Sirius Logic's audio decoding chips. Its performance reaches a level of 0.00009% non-weighted THD. That's a very good number for a chip-based DAC. The output voltage is a bit higher than standard. It provides 2.5 volts for the RCAs and 5.2 volts for XLRs. That's at least partly why it performs so well on paper. But I wouldn't consider this cheating the spec sheets. Even with a little over 5 volts on the XLRs, you're rather unlikely to overdrive any amplifiers and make them distort. The built-in headphone amplifier does not seem like an afterthought with no real amplification stage. SMSL developed an independent circuit dedicated to it. Its output power is not bad. 3 watt into 16 ohms or 1.5 watts into 32 ohms, which is a more realistic measurement. That should be enough to power most headphones. At first sight, it shares the typical SMSL house sound. Tonally, it leans slightly more towards clarity and airiness. It seems to avoid muddiness at all costs. In this case, that cost is some lower midrange energy, warmth and fullness. This can make for a dull presentation if the rest of your chain, like the amplification, speakers or headphones, are already on the brighter, thinner side of things. But it can also pair very well with lots of warmer gear, making it more balanced, neutral and, for lack of a better comparison, more true to the recording. The only real sonic characteristic I didn't particularly find appealing is the sub-bass. It doesn't seem that extended, despite what frequency response measurements try to indicate. Being a flat line. That leaves us with less dynamic impact and punch than expected. That's only noticeable compared to more expensive DACs, and becomes clear once you get to the higher end of speakers or headphones. Before you get to that level, you're likely going to upgrade your source gear anyway, to SMSL or another company's higher priced products. The positive effect of the tonal characteristics affected the soundstage. It's not collapsed, but also not super wide. However, what I find very nice about it is the accuracy and precision. The analytical nature of this product helps it a lot. The instruments and vocals are very close to being locked in in a single place, where they are supposed to be. There is some movement and blurriness. Nevertheless, it's quite impressive. The vocals are a little forward. I would assume that it's on purpose, as they implemented an HDMI ARC connection, so they assume that people will use it with their TVs. The most common things that people watch on TV are movies, news and stuff where human voices, as well as their intelligibility, are crucial. 